Hello, and welcome to the New York Jewish Film Festival. The festival is presented by the Jewish Museum and Film at Lincoln Center. I'm Aviva Weintraub from the Jewish Museum, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to this discussion of the film Adventures of a Mathematician. And I'm delighted that we have with us Thor Klein, the director, Hello. Lena Verma, the producer, and the lead actor, Philippe Plokinski. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. And I understand you're coming to us from Berlin. Lena yes. and Thor and Philippe is in Warsaw. That's right. So thank you so much for this wonderful film. Um, Maybe we can start out by you telling us how you came to make the film. What about the story attracted you? Well, I came across uh, the story of um, Stan and uh, Johnny when I was about 13 years old. I discovered this um, book in the library in my hometown. And um, it was a book uh, which was called uh, Who, Who Got Einstein's Office? And it was essentially about the everyday life in the Institute for Advanced Study in the 30s, a very uh, fabulous place where the US invited essentially the best scientists in the world to just think. Um, and uh, they had a great time there. They were driving fast cars and throwing parties and uh, wearing funny hats. And I, that made me actually to, to want to become a mathematician myself. Although I had no significant talent for it, which I had to find out when I was about 16 years old. And I was sitting next to a guy who was clearly talented. And uh, <laughs> it was very traumatic for me to realize that, that I don't, I'm not a mathematician, unfortunately. But I had a great literature teacher at the same time. And he made me aware of that I, maybe I'm more interested in the, in the, in the stories and the ideas of these people and then in the actual math. And that kind of, um, that, that really was a, really a big relief for me because um, I could keep reading about it and still fantasizing about it. And I essentially did this until I was in film school. And then uh, one day I came across um, Stan's book, Adventures of a Mathematician. And um, since I knew these characters, as I, as I, as I mentioned before, I, I fell in love again with this special friendship they had. And of course, th at that point, I was older. So I realized that underneath all the parties and, and fast cars, there was deep, deep, deep tragedy. And that intrigued me even, even more at that point. And so I asked my uh, producer, Lina, whether we could probably option the book and, um, and, and uh, uh, make it into a film. And then, um, yeah, she, she took it on, essentially. <laughs> and Lena, how was it assembling um the financing and the logistics for this kind of film? Yeah, I mean, it was it was quite a ride. I mean, from early on, I knew I want to do a co-production with Poland because um, Stanislav Ulam came from Poland uh, to the US. So I thought it's, it's uh, really enriching to have a, a Polish view on it. Um, and uh, so I found quite early on when we were just in development of the script, actually, um, my Polish co-producer, uh, Joanna Szymanska from Shipsboy. And uh, we basically financed it together. And first we had a Canadian partner on board and then unfortunately it didn't work out because we couldn't get enough money out of Canada. So in the last moment, just like half a year before shoot, we had to exchange Canada for the UK. Uh, so <laughs> it, was, it was quite interesting also to then get into um, the knowledge of how to combine governmental funds like the continental Europe system with equity um, and in-kind from the UK. So uh, it was a steep learning curve, um, but now I think I'm an expert, so that's great. <laughs> yeah, it must have been complicated. Um, can you tell us about the casting and how did you find Philippe? Well, I decided uh, once I, I started to work on the script, I decided to cast early because this the, these men that was a very very special generation of, of men. They were brought brought up in a in a very special time in the Belle Epoque, and um, I knew that it's not easy for an actor to to grasp this from an actor today to grasp this this um, special kind of behavior. Um, and uh, so I did this, and. 
I was uh, developing further developing the script, and at a certain point, there were some timing issues with the actor I had originally in mind, and it didn't work out. And I was pretty pretty. Uh, I, I, I had I, I was really um, I. I I, I felt a bit of panic, let's, let's say it like that. So we had to do a, um, I had great uh, Polish casting director. So we had to do a, a casting on a very short notice and invited essentially a lot of actors. Um, and uh, Philippe was the last one to come in and he was doing another shoot. And uh, they told me that he wanted to come, but he, because he was shooting, he could not learn the scenes. So he could just read the scenes. And I was a bit skeptical about that, but I thought, okay, if he really wants to come, then um, we should definitely see him. So uh, we read the scenes and uh, it was just amazing. I mean, what he did was, uh, I, I looked at him, I, first, I, I did not want to look at the, uh, the actor through the monitor, I wanted to see them, but uh, I realized it was really something, he had it just, he had what I was, was looking for. And then I saw him uh, through the monitor later on and I could see that, that also his whole appearance on screen was just spot on. So um, it was literally, I mean, a lot of people tell this all the time, but it was the last guy to walk in and the best choice I could make, essentially. Oh, that's great. And Philippe, how was this project for you? How was it playing this complicated character? Uh, well, it's uh, one of the best things that happened in my life. So uh, I'm very happy to hear uh, this, uh, I mean, it's not the first time I hear Thor uh, telling the story of the casting, but uh, um, yeah, I, I get kind of emotional when I think about this, uh, about the casting and about the entire project, because uh, it, it certainly has a, a very special place in my uh, in my career. It's definitely a very special place project it was very spontaneous um we met we felt in love artistically speaking uh at the casting and um and artistically speaking on set something happened very very uh bizarre we will maybe have the opportunity to speak about you know building the character but uh, it's definitely something that that is different that than what I did before. Yeah, it's it, it stands out definitely. Well, perhaps you can continue and tell us about building the character. Well, uh, I am. Uh, it's it's something that I I it's it's easier to speak about this afterwards because uh, when you are inside, when when you're building a character, when you're in the process, you you just do what you think you you know how to do and you, you're doing the, the best you can and of course you are uh, you know helped by the the entire team the director and uh, but I see myself although it is always a paradox uh, you know the, the the eternal paradox if the actors is the actor is embodying the character or he, he is representing something and I always believed in some kind of distance to the character. I always believed in acting as a craft, as something that I, you know, that I kind of know how to manage, something quite technical, something mathematical in a way. Uh, and um, I think that for the first time in my life, I just might have switched. I might have cross the border and and I realized this just after sh the shooting when I finished the shooting I spend something like half an hour soaping myself and trying to get rid of the character and it was a very difficult process just to to yeah to to wash to wash this entire story out of your body um and it's a, it's a bizarre feeling, but because until today I have the feeling that I I'm still very close to this character. So um, so yeah, for someone that believes in distance, in representing, in the craft of acting, um, it's it's uh, it's a very 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 special project. 
Well, and the film is so dramatic um, and there's so many moments of conflict. Um, Thor, how did you maintain, what was the feeling like on the set? Um, Mm, it was very uh, um, tense because I decided to shoot early on to shoot in a, in a way that, with long takes to not do a classical coverage, but to have one take for the whole scene. And this is um, puts a lot of on one hand, it's 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 a great uh, I think it's a great um, gift for the for the for the actors and the actors, because they can control it. I cannot do much later. I mean, I can sure I can edit, but I'm I'm giving I have to give I have to rely on them completely, um, which and on the other hand, it's it's, of course, a, 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 a huge pressure on the on the actors and actresses. So um, managing these energies a little bit and unleashing them at the right point and holding them back another point was a bit like it felt a bit like building an, uh, an atomic bomb to be honest <laughs> because i also had a had a internet we had we, we because it was an international production so um my dp was from romania my editor is from france uh, my producer is a swiss czech uh, my actors are polish so it was a, it felt it had this feeling and uh, um, it's uh, and at the same time, you, you when you the, for me the f a film is, of course it's, I'm I'm a, I'm a writer myself and I I, I uh, it was the point where I started from. But a screenplay can only take you so far. It's not the film. A lot of people think the screenplay is the film, but it's not. It's it is something that gives everybody an an, an idea and more than an idea, of course. But you shape it on set, so it means that you have to be very open, especially when you deal with a with a, such a complex subject where you have so many layers, and you have to be constantly aware of all of them. And sometimes you realize in a scene, oh, actually, it is this. This is actually much more important than what I thought it, it is. So you have to react all the time, and in in a fragile environment like a film set, this can create uh, tensions and and intense moments, which you have to you have to you you just have to um, stand stand up to it and have to face it and um, that was it was a very um, it was an exciting really exciting ex experience I have to say <laughs> and I believe in addition to directing the film you wrote the screenplay um, mm -hmm. did you follow the book fairly closely or did you change the structure. I changed. I mean, I, I I kept the the broad structure because it's the historical structure in a way. But I also the thing with the book is that actually, I mean, this is it is a bit of a secret, but um, it's it's a charm. I think it has some charm. The book was actually written by Stan's wife, by Francoise. So she's, <laughs> and in a sense that he Stan was just a guy who would not. He was not patient enough to sit down and to really write it because his mind was 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 moving so fast. But he was a great storyteller, so he told her that, and she she was a, a pretty good writer, and she she wrote it down. So that for me, once I I found that out, it also gave me some an interesting perspective on the story because I was also discussing with my DP a lot. Um, what is what is the actual, you know, the the, the actual pers who's who's telling this story, so to say, on the on a, on another level a layer, um, and that was a um, that that was a very uh, enriching moment also for the work on the on the screenplay. On the other hand, it was shaped also to a great degree by my re the research I did in in the U.S. and um, I have to mention one lady because she without her I probably wouldn't. I think it would not, I would not, have, maybe not have reached the depth that I, at least in my opinion, uh, that I reach. And her name is Priscilla McMillan. She is a writer and a journalist from, um, from uh, Boston. She is, um, she's very old and she wrote a, a few very, very interesting books about also one about the subject. And she had the chance back in the days to meet them all after the, the bombs were dropped and do extensive interviews with all of these people at Los Alamos. So to read, and she allowed me to, to take a look at her private archive and go through all the notes she made back then. And there I really, it was like sitting across all these people and I felt, you could really felt the pain through the notes. And this is, was one of the 
most inspiring moments for me in the in the process of, of getting the screenplay and the film and the, the 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 density of the film right. And also, I mean, I, I'd like to add that um, thanks to the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, um, we also got a science mentor, George Dyson, who wrote um, uh, Turing's Cathedral. That was a big inspiration yes. uh, for Thor, and he also. Um, gave us access to um, conversations between Stan Ulam and uh, Enrico Fermi, I think. No, it was Giancarlo Rota. Giancarlo Rota. And um, at the same time, George Dyson is the son of Freeman Dyson, who died um, early last year. Yeah. And at the same time, we were also meeting Claire Ulam, the daughter of Stan Ulam, several times. And uh, she was very, very supportive of the whole project and um, she came to the world premiere in in the beginning of uh, 2020 to Palm Springs and we just learned actually that uh, on the 18th of December she sadly passed away. Yeah so you you managed to have one at least one in-person screening before the yes. were closed. Did you show the film in Germany and Poland? Not yet. We uh, that's. I mean, we showed it in Germany at the. It had a, um, a premiere on a, on the festival on the on the festival there. Um, but uh, the release will be. I mean, most likely in April or May. We're not sure yet. Um, I just got uh, um, to because we're planning to do um, when the film when we have the German premiere. We plan to do a conversation with. Um, a couple of very well-known politicians in Germany about the subject itself. And it was really great to see that they uh, responded very positively also to the, to the whole topic and the whole, the whole uh, subject that, that's, that we are debating with the film. Yeah, I, th I think 2021 will be actually the year that we finally can show it to more people um, than just the world premiere and some uh, selected uh, screenings that were happening online, but also the film sold to many territories, uh, including the US with Samuel Goldwyn, but also France and um, Poland. Uh, I just heard from Joanna, my uh, Polish co-producer, that there's gonna be happening uh, release very soon. So we are very excited to uh, come to Poland with the film and, and show it there. And I guess uh, Philip is excited about that too. Finally, he can. I, I'm waiting for you. <laughs> and I'm curious if you, um if you showed the film at any stage to any mathematicians um, or if you consulted and if Philippe consulted or observed any mathematicians or scientists in the process. So uh, just to, um, if on my side, I, what I did was I, I, um, I had the screenplay um, read by um, a, a, a mathematicians I met along the way that I, I, if, uh, that I, um, found very interesting. Um, we haven't showed it yet to a group of mathematicians. <laughs> we hope to do this actually uh, um, uh, this year because we, um, we, we, uh, we won a prize from the Breakthrough Foundation, which, uh, which do a big, um, basically it's the, it's the Oscars of science, so to say. And they have a very big um, a network of, of, of course, of, of uh, scientists. And I would love to do a screening for them at some point throughout the year. But I heard from, uh, Claire always told me that um, Stan would not be, I mean, you could go with him to the cinema, but he probably would have left after 10 minutes and he would usually say, I got, oh, I, I got the concept. And then uh, he, would, he would go and do something, <laughs> something else. <laughs> so I, my expectations, and I mean, I know how to, to deal with, with them by now. I have talked, to, to, uh, I've talked, I've spoken to many of them, but it's a different, just a different way of seeing the world and, um, some of them just, it's just not their thing. And Philippe, did you try to get into the mindset of a mathematician or speak to anyone? Well, I probably tried to get into the mindset of a mathematician, but the closest thing uh, that I got under my hand uh, to a mathematician was Thor. Uh, and he's good. I mean, he wrote the thing, so he know what he's talking about. In the script, we had a lot of metaphors. I mean, Stan was using pictures, metaphors, and lucky enough, he was fascinated by um, 
uh, casino uh, metaphors and cards uh, uh, metaphors, uh, which I am way more comfortable with because I I I kind of play poker and I'm very I mean I have a, I have an experience in in this era so I was I was way more comfortable with those uh, with those lines related to casino and uh, to to statistics related to games and, and card games uh, we have uh, we had a few scenes uh, uh, and I, I I think I put it a, a bit of myself in, in those lines um, but yeah, the metaphor uh, was a big help in order to express what was uh, related to mathematics. And when it was about mathematics, I just trusted the script and I discussed, I had long discussions with uh, uh, Thor to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, but yes, I mean, he did, he did the study and then he directed me uh, so I can... I can uh, shine on screen and uh, look uh, look clever <laughs> which I'm not <laughs> well an another big um, theme in the film of course are all the moral and ethical issues um, and how did you I think you did a really good job of raising them and showing um, how difficult and confusing and really upsetting um, some of the decision uh, making processes were. Um, was it, was that a focus in your mind as you were developing the project Thor? Well, I, just, just before, just before Thor say something, I think that's the heart of the subject. And in terms of acting too, I know Thor is gonna say way more uh, things because he created this baby. But in terms of acting, uh, when you read the script, of course, uh, the movie is about, um, about mathematician, of course, the movie is about geniuses, but we also mentioned the, the movie is about drama, it's about friendship, and uh, those underlines are way more important uh, for an actor in order to, to build the character. So Thor, I'll give you the mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, yeah it, it's I have to be honest, it, when I started it, the, uh, to write the screenplay, um, you know, sometimes as a, as a, from the writing point of view, you feel very clever, you know, you think, oh, mm, the obvious thing would that it's about the moral questions, uh, you know, but it should be about something else, blah, 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 blah. And then you continue working and you realize, of course, it's, how could it be about anything else than this at the core of it? And the fact that these were um, also Jewish people, you know, dealing with that. And so uh, that, that became very clear to me through the process of developing it. And then I was, and I'm still, I still am, I'm, I was very, Mm, the, qu the questions are very um, complicated to debate in a way because the starting point is very easy you know in, in a way it was for a lot of these people it was about having a, a, a possibility to stay in the US it was about being able to having a job and and uh, so so and to to help to defend uh, to do to to um, to fight against Hitler so that was a morally a clear thing but then of course uh, after they made the decision, mm, th it was a time when, when they created with their work what we call now the military industrial complex and kind of, a, and, and there are characters like Edward Teller who represent that. From, and for me, doing my research, I could always relate very much to Edward Teller, I, I, even though it is, you can look at him as a very, um, um, you know, a very uh, uh, dangerous force in this. His, um, the, the, when, when you see where these people come from, their relation, to give you one example, the relationship with Russia. You, you, you can only understand this when you look at the history of Eastern Europe, you, when you see how, how, what they experienced, how Russia, um, um, you know, uh, um, overthrew a lot of the governments, if you think of Hungary, even way, way before the, the, the Second World War happened which shaped their, their, their attitude. And they were born in the, in the, in the, when the Austria-Hungarian empire was still there. So th this, 
was such a fascinating perspective on it that uh, uh, it gave it uh, um, it put the moral question in a completely different context, and this this uh, th this kept me uh, kept me going, and I knew the 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 question there is one thing to build this bomb and there is another thing to go back to this place you know to go there and do it again and i found out uh, very early on that this was a question of um their friendships drew them back the community they created in los alamos what what they had as a substitute for home for everything they lost so this gave another layer to this place and and so the 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 more I, I I tried to give the moral questions uh, um, layer after layer after layer to make it afterwards for the audience also very difficult to decide what to do. You know, would you go back? Would you not? What you? It's it's very easy to to judge from from uh, the perspective of uh, two thousand twenty, but um, I think it was it was not so so easy back then. And we will have again to discuss this question in the in the near future because it's not. The genie is out of the, the, the is out of the bottle. We have to continue dealing with it, and um, yeah, this this was uh, th this was what I what I uh, had in in mind essentially all the time. And I mean, it's it is actually quite timely because now in February twenty one, um, the disarmament agreement, the nuclear disarmament agreement, start is um, lapsing, and uh, all the, the big powers have to renegotiate. Uh, their deals and deal terms, and uh, hopefully they'll do, and there will be still nuclear disarmament happen happening. Maybe they can make your film required viewing <laughs> for the discussion. They actually invited us uh, to the United Nations um, in, um, in, I mean, they invited us last year, and of course it had to be postponed. So we hope that we can show the film at the United Nations uh, in, in April or May this, this year, if, if it works out. Well, I hope that does work out. And I think we'll wrap up. I want to thank you all so much for, uh, for the film and for participating in this discussion remotely. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so thank much you so for much. inviting us. Thank you very much.